a new partnership in Singapore, authorization to test in Canada, and an announcement from Google. Welcome to our main news roundup of everything AST Space Mobile. First, let's review the latest analyst price targets for AST Space Mobile stock. In May, four analysts issued price target updates. Following AST's Q1 earnings, Deutsche Bank issued an update on the 14th of May, setting the stock as a buy and reiterating its price target of $64 per share. Scotiabank also provided an update post earnings, lowering its price target by $2.50 to $45.40 stating that this revision was down to AST's new ATM facility. B. Riley and Roth also gave updates in May, both maintaining their previous targets of $36 and $42 respectively. Wondering what news influenced these updates? Let's dive into it. In January 2024, Google announced it would be partnering with AST Space Mobile. Google owns the Android brand, which powers over 3 billion devices globally. In May 2025, Google exercised their right to purchase 8.9 million shares that was part of the January 2024 deal. This transaction means that Google now owns around 2.7% of AST Space Mobile as a whole, and it owns 3.8% of the company's publicly traded Class A stock. This means that AST makes up a little over 12% of Google's holdings, meaning AST Space Mobile is a fairly significant position in the tech giant's portfolio. If you're on X, you'll probably know about this next story, as it's been shared many, many times. Founder and CEO of AST Space Mobile, Abel Avalon, made it onto the front cover of Forbes this month. The American business magazine wrote a piece about Abel and how AST's technology is set to revolutionise how we all connect. Abel is of course the founder of AST, which stands for Avalon Space Technologies. Other entrepreneurs to feature on a Forbes cover include Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos and Carlos Slim, so it's quite a statement for the magazine to feature Abel Avalon on its cover. AT&T has launched a new Satellite Hub website, which acts as a centralised repository for all of their videos and news articles, as well as frequently asked questions relating to AST Space Mobile's tech. In one of the frequently asked questions around timescales, AT&T states that it's too early to give a specific date, but that it's working towards commercial launch. The page also gives some information on the network's collaboration with FirstNet, stating that it envisages giving selected first responders access to satellite communications later this year. At a conference this May, the FCC chairman Brendan Carr told the audience that the FCC has taken steps to speed up the bureaucratic process of space approvals. The chairman said that it often took longer for the regulatory agencies to move an application from one desk to another than it took for companies to actually build their rockets. Carr said that the process had been streamlined and accelerated. He also shared that the FCC was bringing up more spectrum to support new systems. In response to a question, Carr reminded the audience that there are protections in place to ensure satellite services do not interfere with the terrestrial networks. Speaking of speedy approvals, in May the FCC granted approval to Bell Canada to test with AST Space Mobile satellites. This approval runs through to November and will likely see Bell conduct its own live video call test of AST services. This will follow many other calls that have already taken place this year, including one in Japan with AST's partner Rakuten, another in Europe with AST's partner Vodafone, as well as calls with both AT&T and Verizon in the United States. With these calls, AST is proving to investors that it's a global company with something to offer in all markets. In May, Singapore's Defence, Science and Technology Agency announced a partnership with AST Space Mobile. This partnership will see AST's network be used to provide connectivity during humanitarian assistance, disaster relief and emergency response situations. 
AST is already working with FirstNet in the US and Vodafone's Mission Critical Initiative in Europe to make people safer in times of crisis. We wouldn't be surprised to see more first responder partnerships for AST in the near future since its technology offers a unique advantage when the terrestrial network is either unavailable or non-existent. On the 12th of May, AST shared its Q1 2025 earnings update with investors. AST shared that it expects to conduct five launches in the next six to nine months and that it currently has 40 Block 2 Bluebirds in production. It also shared that it expects to generate revenue in the second half of 2025. This will be in the range of between 50 and 75 million dollars. Having now fully utilized its previous ATM facility, AST announced that it was launching a new one, giving it the ability to raise up to half a billion dollars by selling shares in the company. This is good news for growth, but many investors clearly didn't like the idea of further dilution, with the stock price trending down in the week following earnings. We've upscaled the call and posted the full version in a video. If you're looking for a highlights montage, we've got you covered there too. Head over to our channel, and while you're there, please subscribe to Connected Space. Let's take a look ahead now at upcoming events for AST Space Mobile in June. First up, we've got the resolution of the Legado bankruptcy case. This is for the Spectrum deal that AST struck in January of this year, which would give it access to up to 45 MHz of premium lower mid-band spectrum in the US and Canada. This spectrum will enable AST to offer high-speed data services to users, facilitating a true 5G service. We'll know for sure if AST will be able to use this spectrum once the case resolves. In June, we'll also find out if AST Space Mobile stock will move into the Russell 1000 index. AST is currently a member of the Russell 2000 index, but is a candidate to move into the Russell 1000 index. Moving up would cause some short-term volatility for the stock. The two indexes are mutually exclusive, meaning that funds tracking the Russell 1000 would need to buy shares of AST Space Mobile stock, while those tracking the Russell 2000 would need to sell shares. The newly reconstituted indexes take effect after the US market close on the 27th of June, so if the move takes place, you can expect a lot more buying and selling to take place at the end of June. We also expect to hear news on AST's next launch, which will be with the ISRO. This launch was originally earmarked for Q1 of 2025, but has been pushed back. It's currently expected to take place in July or August 2025, meaning an announcement should be imminent. We got a lot of AST Space Mobile news in May, and there's a lot to look forward to in June. What future news item excites you the most? Share it in the comments section, and while you're there, drop us a like, and of course, please subscribe to Connected Space.